Brilliant. Thank you very much, Phil. Uh, do have that open if you want to and follow along, page 1089. And we are going to look at that bit of the Bible together in two parts. Let's pray, shall we, and ask for God to help us. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for that first Easter morning. And Father, we may be very familiar with what happened then, but we pray, please, Father, you would show us why it is so amazing. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, um, we put some grass seed down recently, about four weeks ago in our house. You know when it was really, really hot? I thought it would be a really good idea to put some grass seed down when it's really, really hot. So there we are. We dug up that little bit of earth. There's Jemima, Joe and Kezi. We dug it up and we put some grass seed down. And then, for about four weeks, it was freezing cold, wasn't it? And it snowed and it was horrible. Nothing happened. It was just like bare earth for four weeks. I thought, oh man, what a failure. I'm rubbish at gardening. And then this last week, oh, hello, this last week, look what happened. It started to grow. Amazing. Now it's really growing because it's really, really warm. It's great, right? It didn't seem to work. It didn't seem to make a difference. And then suddenly it did. Well, wow. You know what? We can think about Jesus like that, can't we? You know, does he work? Does he make any difference? After all, the world is, is a very sad place, isn't it? It's a very sad place sometimes. And our lives can sometimes feel very sad. So does Jesus actually work like the grass seed or not? Well, imagine Imagine how Mary Magdalene was feeling on that first Easter Sunday morning. She had watched Jesus die on the cross, hadn't she, on Good Friday. The man that she thought was from God, the man she thought would make a difference, he was now dead and he was gone. So, so Jesus doesn't work then, does he? Well, we're going to see this morning, we're going to see two things, that Jesus really rose and that Jesus really rescues. So first of all, Jesus really rose. Now I'm gonna need a Mary Magdalene. I need someone to be Mary Magdalene. Bear in mind, YouTube is running. This person will be on YouTube and others will be too. Who'd like to be, uh, is that okay, Maisie? Yeah, Maisie's gonna come be Mary Magdalene. You're dressed uh, very well today. It's lovely, well done, excellent. Um, so Mary, right? You, Mary Magdalene, you went to the tomb, okay? And when you got to the tomb, you were pretty surprised because the massive stone that was there, it's huge, was rolled away, right? You were pretty surprised by that. In fact, you were so surprised that what you thought you should do is run and tell uh, Peter and John. Now, don't fall over because you're wearing long clothes, but run to Pascaline uh, to tell Peter and John. Oh, she goes, brilliant, excellent. There she goes. Now. I guess we need a Peter and John, don't we? So it's going to have to be Charlie and Joe. What a, actually, William could go. Do we have another part for William? Uh, go on, let's have three boys. Go on, you can all be giant. Oh, no, four. Come on, John, this is just getting crazy. <laughs> so we have double. We have four boys. Okay, so we'll have two Peters and two Johns. Okay, come, guys. This is going to turn into exactly what I thought it might, a bit of carnage. So uh, you're going to you're going to, you're, you're with Mary at the moment. So off you go to Mary at the back, boys. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, Mary tells you the, the amazing news and without falling over and turning it into a race, you run to the tomb. So run, 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 run. Don't fall over, please. That'd be very, very bad. Excellent. Whoa, okay. Don't go in. Don't touch it. Excellent. Brilliant. Okay, so here we are. We're at the tomb. Now, um, John, who is two of you, so say Charlie and Joe, you're John, okay. You just look in. You don't go in, you just look in, okay. And what do you see in there? What do you see? Some sheets. some sheets. You see some sheets, right? Brilliant. Okay. Well, you just looked in. Okay, that's John. So off you go there for a second, John. You too. You're both John. Off you go, Jake. Great. And then Peter, you actually went in, but because it might fall over, I suggest you don't go in, but put your head in. Go on, put your head in. And there you are. So there's John and John. And you're John William as well. So you go and have a look inside. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. And they saw the strips of linen that Jesus is dead body had been wrapped in and they saw the cloth that was wrapped around his head thank you thank you john out you come brilliant okay now these clothes that were that jesus was wrapped in these prove that the tomb had not been robbed right because the robbers would never take time to take these off jesus's body 
And why would they want to? Because they were worth money. They would take them, wouldn't they? And what's more, the spices inside them were worth even more money. So they'd definitely take them with them if they were robbers. They weren't robbers, were they? The grave had not been robbed. In fact, it looked like Jesus had taken the clothes off himself. But how could he do that? Because Jesus is dead, isn't he? Well, um, John, it's John's turn. That's Job and someone else. Charlie, is it? Um, John, you then go in, but don't go in. Just put your head in. All right, okay. And it was amazing. When John looked in, suddenly he saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Okay, boys, out you come. Brilliant. Excellent. Round of applause for Peter and John and, uh, and Mary. I think you can all go back to your seats while well I'm people. Excellent. Good, good, good. Thank you very much. Um, you see, John knew immediately, he knew immediately that Jesus must be alive. He must have risen from the dead, even though he didn't understand the Bible. He didn't understand that the Bible said Jesus was going to rise from the dead, that the king would die and rise again, even though the Bible does say that in the Old Testament. He wasn't expecting it. He was totally shocked. So it's not like he kind of thought, oh, do you know what the Bible says? This? I think I'll make up a story about it. He didn't even understand the Bible until this point, until after this point. But he knew it must be true. He knew Jesus really rose. And that's a very big deal because John knew Jesus really had died he, he saw it on Good Friday. If you were here on Good Friday, what we saw on Good Friday was that there was a soldier who got a spear and stuck it into Jesus' side and blood and water came out and John says he saw it. So he really, really knew Jesus had died and now he really, really knew Jesus was alive. But if he was dead and then he was alive, that's massive because death is our biggest problem, isn't it? It's the thing that we can't get rid of it's the thing that's so so sad that nobody can solve but if jesus if jesus had smashed through death he must be from god he must be in fact john probably remembers jesus kept calling himself the son the son could he actually be god the son god himself wow you see jesus's death is like my grass seed right it looked like it didn't work looked like a complete failure but then suddenly it worked jesus alive again shows that jesus does work he does but 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 how does he work what does he do like why come from god to die and rise again why do that how does it make any difference we are going to think about that in a minute but first we're going to sing we're going to sing that jesus is a mighty mighty savior and we've got some more actions as well for this so let's stand together and we'll sing brilliant do have a seat excellent so here we go again john chapter 20 second part on page 1089 if you're following along so could all these things we've heard show that Jesus is a mighty, mighty saviour? Could they? Well, let's have um, another Mary. I just have a different Mary. Sorry, Maisie. Let's have a different Mary. It has to be a female, I think. It'd be more appropriate, wouldn't it? Anyone want to do it? No. <laughs> Maisie again, then. Come on, then. Yeah, brilliant. OK, so now Mary Magdalene, she's at the tomb and she's crying. So come on, Mary, let's, let's, we're going to cry. Brilliant. OK, now... <laughs> She's crying because she thinks that Jesus is dead and he's gone. But she now looks into the tomb. So in you go, Mary, have a, have a little look inside. Okay. And as she looks into the tomb, what does she see? Wait for it, wait for it. It's a big dramatic effect here. Okay, special effects team. What does she see as she looks into the tomb? Mary, what do you see? Some sheets. Some sheets and a bright light. Yeah, it's a big, big effect big budget that's right and it was two angels there were two angels there mary and the angels said to you they said oh, hello they said woman why are you crying as if to say mary you shouldn't be crying because you should be celebrating jesus is alive and mary you turn around and suddenly you saw a man okay and we're not going to have him up here but a man 
and you think he's the gardener and and so you talk to him as if he's the gardener but suddenly the man says to you Mary and one word changes everything because Jesus always said his sheep would recognize his voice and Mary really does recognize that voice she knows it's Jesus so she gets on her knees she gets on her knees and she probably grabs his feet so grab his feet there you are and she worships Jesus because Mary knows that if Jesus is alive it really proves he must be from God who else could smash through death but someone from God and Jesus said do not hold on to me for I've not yet ascended to the father you see Jesus says he is from the father just like Mary's thinking and he is going back to the father and the resurrection proves he is Jesus really is God the son but he's not going back straight away it's gonna be around for about 40 days actually amazing so there's no need to cling to him Mary so you can you can let go of him it's amazing isn't it though that you could that you could touch him because of course Jesus was real he's really alive he's physical you could actually cling to him amazing isn't it in the flesh he rose again that means Jesus had totally beaten physical death there is so much sadness in our physical world isn't there but here's a glimmer of hope it's something that we we really really long for something we really really want what is the hope let's have a think well done Mary off you go well done brown applause for Mary brilliant what what is the hope what is this hope that Jesus brings well let's think about this um here's a workman right now he's just finished work for the day now when you finish work for the day woohoo where do you go home is the answer you go home okay that's where you go now you go home so he's going home he's really really happy it's home time like when the bell rings at school or something okay now Jesus always said when he finished his work where would he go he'd go home he'd go back to the father he always said and now he's died and he's risen again he says I'm going back I'm going home to the father I've done my work basically he's saying so what's his work it's not building a house it is building a family have a look at this Jesus said go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father to my God and your God Jesus calls God his father he really is God's son but he's the only one who gets to call God father literally daddy daddy calling God daddy because he is God's son but now Jesus is saying now I've died and risen again you can call God daddy you can call God father that is amazing imagine that closeness of knowing God as daddy as father well Jesus has done it Jesus dying and rising again brings people into his family just like he is so close to God that is the work Jesus has finished and now he can go home now he can go back to the father it's amazing when you think about it that work that he did isn't it it's amazing um, this is Jeff Bezos yeah um, anyone know who he is there's a little clue there he's the guy who started Amazon right he's the richest man in the world okay imagine being in his family imagine the privilege of being a Bezos wouldn't it be amazing do, do you deserve to be in his family do, do you deserve that do you have the family likeness are you a Bezos no in fact only his three sons and one daughter deserve that they are in his family so what about God and his family and what amazing privilege to be in his family do, do you deserve to be in God's family do you have the family likeness God is perfect and holy he has one son Jesus who is perfect and holy but only his one son deserves to be in the family right are we holy like Jesus have we never done anything wrong like Jesus never did anything wrong have we have we have we never said or thought anything wrong like Jesus never did sadly not sadly we are people who have sinned we have sinned we're not holy like Jesus 
we have actually turned away from God's way. We're like sheep who've gone astray and it's called sin. And that's a real problem, isn't it? We can't be in God's family because we don't have the family likeness. And you know what? Even sadder, we don't even want it, really. We kind of rather not have it a lot of the time. We don't deserve to be in God's family. Only Jesus does. But do you know what happened at Easter? Jesus really rescues us. It's remarkable. Um, the, the Old Testament promised it would happen. Isaiah said, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's an amazing thing to say. So, so basically Jesus, he was perfect. He was perfectly holy, wasn't he? And yet Jesus, the perfectly holy person, went to the cross. Oh, hello, sorry. Went to the cross, didn't he? Which is, which is amazing. And when he went to the cross, what Isaiah is saying is that the Lord laid on him our iniquity, our sin. So what happened on the cross is that our sin was put on Jesus. And Jesus paid for it all on the cross. That's so good because it means I no longer have it. And it's also so good because on that first Easter day, Jesus rose again and he shares with us his life. And now we are in God's family. And of course, because Jesus rose again, actually, all that sin is dealt with. And Jesus is still holy and perfect and is still part of the family. And so are we. We are all now close to God, part of the family. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So Jesus, he really, really works, doesn't he? He really rescued us to eternal life with him and with God. He makes us part of that privileged family. Can you imagine a better work that God could have done for you? Can you imagine a better work? There is no better thing he could have done for you. And what it means is that Jesus, he is actually fixing our sad world. He's fixing it one person at a time. People like us who are far from God, who've gone our own way, brought into his family, brought close to him now and forever. Isn't that wonderful? He is fixing our world now. If you've not yet said yes to this, to him doing this for you, please, please do. Please hear more about this. Come and hear more here. Do the Christianity Explored course. Hear more about this. And if you have done this and you know Jesus has done this for you, you've said yes to this, we'll see that Jesus sent Mary to tell others about it too because he wants others in his family. He sends you as well to bring people into his family. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for Easter and for what Jesus did. Thank you that he really, really rose and we can be sure of that. And because he did, we can be really sure of what he's done for us, that he really, really has rescued us. Thank you, Father. He has brought us into your family now and forever if we just say yes to him doing that for our sin. Father, thank you so much. We pray that you'd help us to want others to know this too, as you want others to know this. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing.